Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Maths 911. My name is John Louis, and I'm hoping in the next hour, together with Heather Frankiskos, to make some of the maths seem really simple to you. Indeed, it is simple if you just listen carefully and you watch us do the simple things on the screen. We'll show you clever methods, shortcuts, and all the things that you need to make maths easy for you will be shown to you right here at on maths 911 we said we were going to do the challenge question that was in the newspaper this week and that's exactly what we're going to start off with just a brief explanation about the question and what it entails the question was about solving two inequalities where there was an inequality involving an absolute value and an inequality which involved fractions rational um, inequality in other words an inequality involving fractions where you have to be very careful about the denominator and the question didn't say solve for x separately but instead it said solve for x the one and at the same time solve for x the other now if you look at the screen I have two absolute value inequalities and this screen right here basically summarizes everything you need to know when it comes to absolute value inequalities these are the basic two inequalities that you need to be able to solve. Absolute value of x less than or equal to 2 and absolute value of x bigger than or equal to 2. If we look at a number line where we have 0 in the middle and we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and minus 4 and if you imagine that these answers on the number line are in fact, these numbers on the number line, I mean, are in fact the x's that we will substitute into the inequality, then which of these that I have on the number line, which of these numbers will solve the top inequality? Well, if we look at naught, naught will solve the inequality. How come? Because the absolute value of naught is naught which is less than or equal to 2. If we replace the x with naught, we get the absolute value of naught which is naught and in fact naught is less than or equal to 2. It is a solution to the top inequality but it isn't a solution to the bottom inequality. Let's look at the number 1. Does the number 1 satisfy the inequality. Well, if we replace the x with 1, we get the absolute value of 1, which is less than or equal to 2, which is true. Therefore, this number 1 satisfies the inequality. Now, if you have any idea with regards to the absolute value function, if you have any understanding of it, you will understand that the absolute value of 2 is the same as the absolute value of minus 2. The absolute value of 3 is the same as the absolute value of minus 3. The absolute value function takes a quantity and makes it positive. So the absolute value of 5 and the absolute value of minus 5, the answer to both those is 5. They're the same. So if we look back on the screen, we can see 1, absolute value of 1 is 2, but the absolute value of minus 1, if I take minus 1 and put it in there, it'll also work because the absolute value of minus 1 is 1. And if I replace the x with that number, is this true? Indeed. So what I've shown you on the screen is I've shown you three numbers which solve this inequality. Let's see if we can get more. What about 2? If I replace the x with 2, I get the absolute value of 2, which is 2. And remember, when we look at this inequality, we say less than or equal to, not less than and equal to, less than or. So as long as one of those is being obeyed, it's okay. So the 2, absolute value of 2, is it less than or equal to minus 2? It, in fact, is equal to minus 2, so that is true. And the absolute value of minus 2 would also work. So, if we now look at the number 3, 3 going into the absolute value of x, 
absolute value of 3 is 3, which is now not less than or equal to 2. So 3 does not solve the inequality. Well, 4? No. In fact, any other number bigger than 3 will not solve that inequality. What about on the negative side? Absolute value of minus 3. Absolute value of minus 3? If I take the minus 3 and I put the minus 3 in, the absolute value of minus 3 is 3, and that's not less than 2, or equal to 2. And likewise there. So if we look at this inequality at the top, we see that the solution lies on the number line between minus 2 and 2. If we take a look at the numbers which satisfy this bottom one, where I've got a cross, they become ticks. And where I've got ticks, they become crosses. Although, in this case, 2 is also included here. Why is 2 included here? 2 is included here because... Two is included, minus two is included because of this equals over here. So if you look at the two solutions, you will see that in fact they are very similar. What is a solution of the one kind of tends to be not a solution of the other and vice versa. So here my solution would be all the numbers lying between two and minus two. That would be my solution. All the numbers on the number line I'm looking at the red part that lie between minus 2 and 2. And down here where the absolute value is bigger than 2, the solution tends to lie outside, outside of 2 and minus 2. Because we want the answer to be bigger than 2. So we need to take a number bigger than 2 or less than minus 2. So the solution here would be written as bigger than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to minus 2. Now, that is not always an easy concept to understand. And I've tried to take some time just to explain to you why it is the way it is. You basically have a number line, and if it's less than or equal to, you're going to take the numbers that are between that number and it's negative. And if it's bigger than, you're going to take numbers outside of those two numbers. The rule that we will give you is simply if you have absolute value and between the absolute value you have some inside and it's less than or equal to a number, you will simply take the inside, whatever it is, and you will put it between the minus 10 and 10. You're telling me that whatever's inside has to take on a value between 10 and minus 10. And if the inequality is bigger than, so we have absolute value, that we then have some expression inside the absolute value, and it's bigger than, or bigger than or equal to, then what we're doing is we're looking at our number 9, and we're saying the answer will be to the right of 10 and to the left of minus 10, meaning the inside, the inside needs to be bigger than 10, or the inside needs to be smaller than minus 10. Notice that on the one side we sandwich the solution. We put it between a number and its negative and on the other side we split the two statements into two. And that is because if you have the word or between two statements such as this you cannot sandwich it. When you sandwich it like this you mean this holds, and at the same time, this holds.